Wow. Shabbatai, peace and power. I'm just digging on, um, I'm just digging on the flow. I'm digging on the flow. You know, we had a heavy week, you know what I'm saying? Rest in power. The bro nip, man. You know what I mean? Out here, especially in LA and Cali. Man, love to the bros out here because, you know, they, uh, they're keeping their momentum flowing, man. They're keeping the marathon flowing, man. The marathon continues. And love to the bro, uh, Big U. You know what I mean? Love to all the, uh, really, man, the gang leaders, man. Because they're bringing all the gangs together, man. They got a meeting today from like 3 to 5, man. If you're out here, you already know about it. You know, a lot of OGs are coming together. So, you know, for everybody that just sees one dimension of things. Oh, Nipsey, he was in the music business. He must have been... Doing this, Freemason, that, da, 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 look, man. You know what I'm saying? Stop speaking on stuff you have nothing about. No nothing about, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody that's in the music business is a part of this deal, and now the creator got to take them out because it is. That's great. Look, man, we didn't say the same thing with Sandra Bland. You know what I'm saying? Lost her life. Love to the sister Sandra Bland. Love to the, the family, man, or Eric Gardner, or Mike Brown, or Trayvon. It's like... Everybody that gets hurt and, and every casualty at war, you don't have to mock and, and say, oh, the creator must have, you know, gave the okay to do that. And da, 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 and they must have been this and they must have been that. I mean, you sound real wicked, you know what I mean, when you make such judgments on people and you don't know anything about the creator's plan or design with that person, what their calling is, what happened, why. So love to the bro Nipsey, man. Love to the family. There's a lot of questions that we still need. As a, as a family, as a street family, as a real ones, man. Uh, a lot of things we need answered, man. We're, we're working towards that as a community here. I know that the bro would have really been digging Drop Nation, man. You know what I mean? But just to see the bros moving forward out here, man, in the main streets, man. I hope this spreads all across the plain, man. That we tribe up. That we forgive our brothers. You know what I'm saying? Forgive ourselves. That's stronger than, uh, you know... Trying to be the hardest nigga, you know what I mean? It's, it's stronger to forgive, man. And I love all my bros, you know what I'm saying? Love me, forgive me, you know what I mean? I ain't perfect. I'm rocking with you, man. You see me, you know, grow right in front of you as you grow right in front of me, man. So let's keep growing. Let's keep uniting, man. And again, rest in power. Nipsey Hustle, man. You know what I mean? So uh, we had a great memorial, man, or great... uh. A great celebration, man, on, on TDR Live, man. So we've just been banging great interviews and music. So we're going to keep that going for sure. Let's get this Proverbs 17 because it was very, I mean, I, I can't deny the timing of it when we're talking sacrifices. And you know what I'm saying? Free Alfred, man. Free Alfred, man. You don't know who Alfred is? You're about to find out, man. But, you know, we're, we're just talking about the sacrificial lamb, man. And, and is it cool to be shedding blood now is that what the creator wants I, I know that you can read and find all these sacrifices that's going on in the in in the Tor torah the tanakh different things different times is that what the creator wants for this exodus is that what the creator wants for this energy this bloodshed purify anything is that a sweet savior at this point has the does the creator just permanently want bloodshed are there ever moments that the creator's like, enough, man, enough is enough? Is there ever a time when you don't sacrifice? What happens when you have no tabernacles? What happens when you have no priest, no priesthood? You got a bunch of phonies popping up, claiming to be your priest, right? And all we can say is that we're the Khan dynasty, which means that we are the remnant of the priesthood. It's only up to the Most High Creator to appoint the priest in this go around. Because no one truly knows anything. So we're all, you know, flowing with the water. No one is claiming to be priest over you or king over you. And anyone claiming to be priest over you or king over you, self appointed priest and self appointed king leading the lamb to the slaughter, I advise you wash your hands of that blood. Because the creator did not ordain that blood for you right now. Don't, don't let nobody spin your mind. You know what I'm saying? Upside down, left, right. Just because they say, oh look, you know, this is what the creator wanted back then. 
Does that mean that the creator told him today to slay? Does it mean we slay today? So I just wanted to read a couple examples and I'm going to let my bro, man, Yohanan, the Hebrew prince, go ahead and take it all the way in and all the way home. He's so full of the Ruach, man, and he gave a great lesson the other day on TDR on that real spill. Get it every Monday, 6 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Central, you know, digging on the same thing and some of the same scripts. So I'm going to get a couple and uh, love to Yohanan because he really sparked this, uh, you know, next wave of this, of this clear clear pure pure water here you know that we can really see okay this is the time we're in now and this is what we're coming out of and this is what we're waiting for and it's going to get clear so that we're not confused because you know who the author of confusion is so we shouldn't be confused about slaughtering animals these days I think the creator had enough bloodshed enough slaughter and you can't deny the timing of our bro Nipsey you know what I'm saying? Because it's like the same day or the same time we're talking about, you know, a community that's sacrificing a live lamb, all right? Then this brother, this lamb, you know what I mean, gets slaughtered, sacrificed. You know, we got the questions who and what and this and that and this and that. I think, I think it's all valid. I don't get mad at the conspiracy theory. I, I don't label it that. Why? I label it an investigation. As soon as you start to investigate, people say, conspiracy. I don't want to hear those theories. It's an investigation. Don't you love the brother? Don't you want to know? Without closing your mind that it had to be this and it had to be that, you don't know either. So when we talk, to, when, when, when we talk sacrificial lambs, man, we're talking the children of Israel, man. When we talk sacrificial lambs, man, we talk the indigenous Amaru Khan so-called Indian. We talk the Shawnee. We talk the Chickamauga. We talk Cherokee, man. We talk Choctaw, man. We talk Takun Sa. And remember, the Sa means land. Love to Jackie Anthony. The S-E-H, Sa, literally means land. All right, so you're talking to sacrificial land. So how, how, how clear do we need to see that the brother, rest in power, Nipsey Hussle, gets sacrificed as this situation is coming up with this community sacrificing the land Basically, you know, almost on the same day, if not exactly on the same day. Whatever happened, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not there. I don't know. I don't know what happened next, man. But this is what we, you know, have been paying attention to, man. So this, it, it's, it wasn't a week later. It wasn't a month later. The exact same time we're talking about, should we sacrifice Alfred, the lamb, man. We called him Alfred, man. Free Alfred, man. He was in a cage. We do it for the prisoners. We do it for the captives. Just as we talking about freeing Alfred. See, it got nothing to do with no individual, man. This has everything to do with the action. This is not an individual thing. This is an action of any of our community. Whether you call yourself this or you call yourself that or you're rocking with this. We still brothers and sisters, whether you say, hey, ya, whether we say, how why? We are brothers and sisters. We are tried, period. Forget about the illusion of seclusion. There ain't no separation. We all love the creator, so we trying to make it right and get it right. It don't matter if you vetted this, we're vetting this, because it's happening and it's connected to us. Because just like you're in Utah... We're in Utah, someone else is in Utah, everyone's going to be connected to that madness, that stench of blood on the floor, because you decide to do it for you, because you think the Most High wants blood these days, when our brother Nipsey Hussle was just slayed, ain't enough blood being spilled on the floor, you are the lamb, you're sacrificing yourself. And everybody gets affiliated. Everybody gets connected with the madness. And maybe that's the end game. Maybe that's the play. Maybe, maybe that's the plan. But Hawaii got 
a divine plan, you see. Either you believe in the creator or you don't. Either you believe that the creator lets you know when it's time to break free. And if bloodshed was necessary, surely the creator will let you know face to face. There won't be no guesswork and there won't be no confusion. But we trying to free Alfred, man. And Alfred's not just one lamb. Alfred is all the lambs, man. Alfred is all the animals that's being killed because of madness and confusion. Alfred is you because you are being killed. Rest in power, Nipsey, because of madness and confusion. So we're keeping the water flowing. This is Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1. And it starts off right away. Better a dry piece of bread with peace in it than a house full of contentious celebration. An intelligent servant will rule over a shameful son and will share the inheritance among the brothers. A refining pot is for silver and a crucible for gold, but Hawa test hearts. An evildoer is attentive to iniquitous speech. Iniquitous speech, a false person or a false shepherd. Listens to a destructive tongue. One who mocks a pauper insults his maker. One who rejoices in another's misfortune will not be exonerated. One who rejoices in another's misfortune. <laughs> you know, it, it just makes me remember when I when I came back, man, after after my unlawful incarceration that I've been fighting for all these years. And I gave my testimony and told the community all about my journey. And there were some out there, you know. You already know who they are that seem to be rejoicing in my misfortune, not knowing that Hawa had a plan for me to reach the prisoners, to keep Shabbat with the prisoners, to bring in the books, to have the conversations, to clear the cobwebs and confusion so that we got prisoners today behind the wall that are hijacked free, that know about Preston John. That know to put their creator first. That keep Shabbat, man. How can you laugh at that and call it a misfortune? How can you mock that and call me a a, a prisoner or a or a thief or whatever the case is? You know what I'm saying? That I've clearly showed and proved that I've overcome, that I fought, and I've been fighting those charges. And I got all that stuff overturned. You go get the drop because I went through the whole testimony. I got my charges overturned yet still got unlawfully detained fighting that to this day because everybody owes me everybody owes me when you kidnap when you traffic a body a vessel unlawfully so i was proven innocent in my case and yet we have mockers and those who seem to just want to benefit or as it says one who rejoices in another's misfortune so when you see your brother struggling you see your brother having to overcome something or fighting for the innocence or if your brother made a mistake and your brother's making good for it, making up for it or overcoming that mistake if you rejoice in their misfortune man the most high says you will not be exonerated I don't know, I only know a couple things that I know truly gets the creator to get, you know, that uh, smokeless fire brewing. When you put another power before your power, call another daddy, daddy. And when you leave your brother hanging, man, you turn your back on your brother and, or you mock your brother's misfortune. Then we speak on 
you know, using the creator's name in vain or swearing falsely by the name of the creator saying, yeah, let's go slaughter Alfred. Let's go slaughter these animals because the creator wants us to look at me. I'm a priest. Now, we're bringing all this together and this is, you know, we flowing with the water, but I'm flowing with Ruach. You know what I mean? I only do drops that my Ruach is on. You know what I mean? So, you know, we're going to do this one, one more good time. We're going to move on and keep flowing with the water. But you know what I'm talking about. We already been through it. And I'm saying this, man, out of passion. Love to Hakan Howard Mark for that incredible drop, those incredible scriptures as well. As the Hakan say, it's reason over passion. Let's keep, a, keep the water going. Reason over passion. So we got the passion, but what's the reason? Let's read it again from the top. Better a dry piece of bread with peace in it than a house full of contentious celebrations. What do you mean by contentious celebrations? Let's get it right here. In the KJV, KJV, it says, Better is a dry morsel and quietness thereof than a house full of sacrifices with strife. So you got the eyes, you can witness someone or some something or a, a community or whatever the case is that seems to be full of this strife. And as an entire community, as an entire family, man, we all got strife because we ain't out of captivity. Proverbs 17 says it is better is a dry morsel and quietness thereof. In the stoned edition, it says better is dry bread with with peace, man. It's, it's better just to have dry bread with peace, man, than a house full of sacrifices. Right now, we're just keeping the water flowing so we can keep the fire burning. Because we require peace. The Most High requires peace. What's peace? What's righteousness? It's being obedient, being in order. The Most High requires order over your sacrifices, order over chaos. Because your sacrifices are in chaos because you ain't got no priest. Like Hosea 3 and 5, you will go. All this time, Israel, without sacrifices, without your priesthood. But one day you will return, seek your creator, and David, who is your shepherd. Not a fake or a false shepherd. An actual shepherd who has a covenant with Hawa. Hawata. And we keep the water flowing. Let's get one more in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. I'm back in the Stones edition. Let's get it. We're going to get this Yohanna to Hebrew Prince and keep it flowing. We got a lot more to get to. We're going to get on the London Company. We're going to get on, um, of course, back in the, in the Press the Hour. We're going to get back on that Press the John. We got a lot lined up. We got some Atlantis drop. Some, uh, I mean, you know what I mean? So we got some flat drop. It's called, we're going to go in rapid fire after this. But I just want to take a nice, you know what I'm saying, a nice breath. You know, especially with everything going on in the city. It's been real time. Been on the phone a lot. You know what I mean? Been talking to a lot of folk. And uh, just behind the scenes, you know, making sure we have a presence. Making sure I got my uh, my heart bone tapped in, man, to the spiral of our community. And I'm working on that more and more, man. You know what I mean? Especially with our prisoners, our captives. And uh, whatever progression is going on here, we need to be tapped in on it. So, you know. Excuse any uh, delays, you know what I mean? A lot's going on behind the scenes in real time. Because it's not about tribing up on YouTube. It's about tribing up in real time with the prisoners. In real time with the captives. And we are the prisoners and we are the captives, man. We are the prisoners of war. The Naga is the prisoner of war. So I don't care about no one saying they want to make war. We already at war. When have we not been at war? We war already. We on a war path. The price is going up. A wow. Isaiah 1, verse 11. 
Hawa says, why do I need your numerous sacrifices? Hawa's fed up. There's a reason why you ain't seeing Hawa face to face. There's a reason why someone has to act like a priest because guess what? There are no priests until Hawa ordains a priest, literally. <laughs> and we hear about our shepherd over and over again who's already ordained and chosen and has a covenant of a priesthood. And whoever Hawa raises up in those days and in that time which we know we're in, there won't be no confusion about people appointing themselves these things since people want these titles so bad. I just want to be your brother. I just want to rock with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we should all feel, not trying to be over this and over. Nah, man, we don't know what we don't know. Let's be brothers. Let's be family. Let's be sisters, brothers. Let's be tribe. And let Hawa rock with Hawa's signs that are unmistakable. Pure water. This is a time of many signs, man. Many meteors. Many dragons in the sky. But you got to keep the water flowing. Again, Isaiah 1, verse 11. Why do I need your numerous sacrifices, says Hawa? I am sated with your elevation offerings of rams and fats of fatlings. I'm sated, man. I'm full. I, I can't take no more. It's making me nauseous. Any more bloodshed, I'm going to get sick. Now, when in Hawaii go from this to, please uh, go, go kill Alfred. Please go sacrifice to some poor little lamb. That's going to make me happy. When did he go from being fool to unfool? And how do we know who's playing the fool? Who's fooling who? Who's swearing falsely by the name of Hawaii to slaughter a lamb? or goats, or sheep, who wants blood, the Most High is full of it, man, wow. wow, if he ever wants this again, trust me, he'll let you know, you don't have to guess about it, because he's full, he's sated, I am sated with your offerings of rams, and the fat of fatlings and the blood of bulls and sheep and goats I do not desire. When did Hawa start to desire this again? Please let us know. Hawa. Please let us know when Hawa got an appetite for blood. Please let us know when he started to desire again since he's saying clearly in Isaiah, I don't even desire this stuff. Don't go back. To Exodus, don't go back to Deuteronomy saying, but look, sacrifices, we're in Isaiah, what came first, right, so Isaiah came after all that, and he's telling you, I don't desire sacrifices, I'm full of this shit, all I want is you to listen, man, I just want your order. I don't want your fat of your fatlings. How much can you kill? I know you can kill Israel. I know you can shed blood. When, when does a while go from not desiring bloodshed to desiring bloodshed? Please let us know when this changed. We're in Isaiah. Don't go back. Don't go back to the past. When did these sacrifices get popping again? And says who? And says, and who says when? <laughs> Why not next Passover? Why not never? Maybe Hawa just desires your offerings of peace, thankfulness, righteousness, joy. How about fruits and flowers? Oh, we just researched some great sacrifices in Peru, live in the ether. And they, these tribes were sacrificing fruits and flowers, man. Fruits and flowers. Keep the water flowing. Let's go. I am sated 
I am full. I am nauseous. With your offerings of rams, fat of fatlings, blood of bulls, sheeps and goats, I do not desire. Alfred, I don't desire his blood. Why? When you come to appear before me, who sought this from your hand to trample my courtyards? Who sought this from your hand to trample my courtyards? Who's telling you this? No longer shall you bring a worthless meal offering. When did when did the the rules change? He didn't go back to the past. He's saying, you know what, man? I I you know the past is the past. I'm full of this. I'm full of it. I'm nauseous with blood. I'm nauseous with all this crap. Because you ain't listening either. Anyway. I don't desire no bulls, no sheep, no goats, no nothing. No longer shall you bring a worthless meal offering. So when did it go from no longer shall you bring no worthless meal offering to, you know what, go kill Alfred. We don't want the plague to get us. So we better kill Alfred. We don't want the plague to get us. You think, you think the plague's going to hurt Hawaii's people? Did it hurt Hawaii's people leaving Egypt? Oh no, because you know they got the blood and and it is right. Is that the only way it can be done? Right. You don't know. You don't know. So why does Alfred have to die when you don't know? You don't know. This exodus is going to make the last one look like small beans, according to the script. We got a whole another layer, a whole another ether, a whole another level to get to. Bloodshed of animals is not required. No longer shall you bring a worthless meal offering. It is smoke of abomination to me. You burning up innocent Alfred. I didn't tell you to do it. I didn't meet with you face to face. I didn't appoint you as a priest. You watching this? I can't exonerate you. It is smoke of abomination to me. I do not desire it. Abomination, man. As for the new moon and Sabbath and your calling of convocations, I cannot abide mendacity with solemn assembly. My soul detests your new moons and your appointed times. They have become a burden upon me. Man. Because it got to the point where all we're doing is just being in chaos and living in vanity. So we remember our Shabbat the best way we can, not knowing our times and laws, but know that all this is being reestablished. So that the Most High is, you know, actually craving it again, desiring it again. But there's been a time when the Most High didn't desire your your appointed times, your festivals, your Sabbaths, all, all the things that make you Hebrew, all the things you want to argue about today. Has the Most High even gotten over the fact that it became detestable? Oh, but my brother, where's your fringes and your this and your this? Man, your fringes were detestable. All your... All your Hebrew customs became detestable to Hawa. Because you were still playing the harlot. And you're still playing the harlot. What we arguing what we arguing about? What we talking about Sabbath for? What we talking about sacrificing lambs for? You're in chaos, man. You're still playing the harlot.
My soul detests your new moons and your appointed times. They have become a burden upon me. I am wary. I am wary of bearing them. I can't even bear it no more. Who told you to sacrifice? I can't even bear it no more. When you spread your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you were to intensify your prayer, I am wary. You ever been just done? You ever, anything ever just said, you know, set you off and just said, man, I'm done, man. I don't want none of it. Oh, imagine being w with a woman who refuses to listen and keeps playing the harlot. Imagine being with a man who refused to listen and himself keeps playing the heart. Putting everything before you. All those old things that used to be your thing. Oh man, we used to have a favorite song. We used to have a favorite restaurant. Man, after a while, it becomes detestable because these people, this person that you're with, just is doing detestable things. And after a while, you say, man, I don't want, I, I'm wary of our favorite food and favorite restaurant, whatever. I, I'm wary of our favorite song. If I hear that song one more time, I'm going to throw the hell up. If I hear that damn song again, but you used to love that song. Wow, I used to love our ancient love song. But what happened? We wouldn't stop playing the harlot. We became stale water. Not moving water, man. Keep the water flowing. Keep the water flowing. One more time, man. My soul detests your new moons, your appointed times. They have become a burden upon me. I am wary of burying them. When you spread your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you were to intensify your prayer, I will not listen. Your hands are filled with blood. What? Your hands are filled with blood. Free Alfred. No more sacrifice and slaughter. Your hands are already filled with blood. You killing your own brother. You trying to assassinate your own brother. You trying to assassinate the character of your own brother. Blood is on your hands. You speak lies. You speak vanity. You swear falsely by the name of Hawa. You bear false witness against your brother. Blood is on your hands. Now you slay Alfred. It is an abomination. And it is detestable. So we must keep the water flowing. Wash yourselves. Your hands are filled with blood. Wow. Wash yourselves. Purify yourselves. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease evil doing. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Vindicate the victim. Vindicate the victim. We do it for the prisoners. We don't mock them and say, oh, look at those thugs. They're in jail for a reason. Oh, look at Nipsey Hussle. He got shot for a reason. What happened before that? The story didn't just start there. Before all that happened, before you judge all the gangs and frats and these and these, these are young brothers and sisters tribing up whether they're in gangs, whether they're in frats. Man, very small percent of them end up being some, you know, boule, this, this, and this. And for those that do, even they can come home, man. But to cut them off and to demonize them before you had a chance to save them or be there as a bridge, because there's so many brilliant brothers and sisters in gangs, frats, sororities, whatever you want to mock and make fun of. They're intelligent, they're driven, and if you can only communicate with them, perhaps you can form a stronger, more united tribe. 
If you can wake these brothers up that's in the gangs or the frats, man, imagine how powerful you would be. But to demonize them and mock them like you're better? Why? Where does that energy come from? Vindicate the victim because before they made those choices, they were victims of slaughter. They were the sacrificial lamb. These are the Indians. These are the copper color indigenous Nagas. What has happened to them so that they have to tribe up in all these confused ways? So because they're in confusion, you're going to mock them? The Most High will not find you exonerated, man. I want to be a bridge for all that, whether it's gangs, whether it's frats and sororities, whatever the case is, because they can all come home. We can all flow. We can all put Hawa first. We can all use whatever our journey is, whether we call it a misfortune, whether it's through the prison system, whether it's through colleges and you tribe up and you join this or join that, mainly because you want to tribe up. They're young, they're powerful, they're beautiful, and they're trying, man. They're doing everything they can with what they know. With what they know, you have to be the moving water for them. Not demonize them. Not mock their misfortune because they made mistakes. You have to vindicate the victim. Free the prisoners, prisoners of the mind. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Vindicate the victim. Your brother says he's been victimized. Then you vindicate him. Don't demonize him. Because the Most High will not exonerate you. You got blood on your hands. Your sister's going through a hard time. Don't demonize her. Vindicate her. Because she was a victim before that. She's been a victim for generations. Colonizing. Oppressing. Vanquishing. Extinguishing. This is the victimized reality of our people. Do not mock their misfortune. Seek justice. Vindicate the victim. Render justice to the orphan. Take up the grievance of the widow. This should be where your energy is. Not in destroying your brother. Not in slaying lamb. Not in causing more bloodshed. This should be where your energy goes. Where your moving water flows, man. To vindicate your brothers and sisters. To raise up the orphan. Those that have been abandoned, man. We do this for the captives, man. Ahab, Allah, Hawa. Let's keep the water flowing, man. And rock with our brother. Our brother. Yohanan Hebrew Prince, man. Let's get it right here. Get on the site so you can get all the drop, man. Season 2, episode 10 and 11. Posted right here. Let's get number 11. Fall back, Shabbatah. Surf the wave. Shalom family. This is yet again your boy. Yohanna the Hebrew Prince coming to you with another segment of Real Spamoni. All praises be to the most high. Hawa. Halel Hawa. Halel Ed Barah coming to you on another Monday to give you another treat. Some wisdom, some knowledge. And hopefully some understanding, understanding, and understanding. You heard me. Today we, we're going to deal some more with these giants. I am excited about this finding. You have no idea how deep this goes for your boy. I've been saying it for the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to go ahead on and say it one more time this week. Is that when you look at the Torah, the Tanakh. And you evaluate the scriptures. And you listen to the wrong people. Or you 
begin to explore, you take that dangerous step of exploration, of spiritual exploration, of intellectual exploration, and you decide to take a, a journey and say, you know what? As my brother Khan Drop would say, I'm going to get into the mind of the hijacking. Look at, look at it from their perspective. And when you look at it from their perspective, I'm going to be real with you. If you're on the receiving end of a butt whipping, of course you're not going to like the individual giving you that work. And if the person who giving you that work comes in the name of someone, you ain't going to like the name of the person that's given the authority to whoever's giving you the business. So when you get into the mind of a hijack, and I just I, I tell you, family, just be careful because this 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 journey is real. And of course, you're trying to understand and understand and overstand everything from different perspectives. You're trying to exercise all angles. And sometimes you get caught up. So looking at these scriptures and you listen to, you know, wind up fooling up with the wrong individuals, have you questioning your own laws? But this finding, most I'm gonna be honest with you was probably one of the greatest findings from my own personal journey. And I'm not saying I found it as if I'm some discoverer. I'm just simply saying for my own spiritual walk, I was able, the Most High allowed me to go through this walk and then find this finding for my own self. So knowing what we was dealing with, and then when you start dealing with these, these Elohims that these, these different nations was dealing with, it really makes you look at things from a very different perspective. Or what I would like to call a proper perspective. So yes, we're going to deal a little bit more with, with some giants. We're going to dive a little bit into the Americas. And some of the recorded works. I'm sure folk is already putting that out in Drop Nation. But there's nothing wrong with a little reiteration. You feel me? But before we deal with that, we have to deal with these precepts, these statutes, these laws, these right rulings, and these commands given to us from the Most High. Watched a couple vids this, this week, and I really like the vid that, I, the, that, that, that Harem put out. Shout out to you, brother. Okay. The vid that, uh, that Khan Drop put out. Wow. Talking about this Passover situation. Talking about this Passover season. Let's get one thing straight. Matter of fact, I wasn't even about to do this. But I'm about, I want to come from Deuteronomy 11. But before I deal with Deuteronomy 11, let's put one thing out right fast. We're going to deal with Isaiah chapter 1. Let go. And the reason why I really like Isaiah chapter 1 is because when we start talking about these Sabbaths. And we're talking about these high days of the year. First and foremost, where's the temple? We don't know. Been desecrated. Where are we right now? We're in captivity. I don't read in no scripture where we did any sacrifices of animals while in captivity. Furthermore, furthermore, when we deal with Isaiah chapter 1, the Most High lets us know how he feels. When it comes down to our Sabbaths and our new moon celebrations. So without further ado, we're going to nip this in the bud right here. Just just kind of piggybacking off a con drop, a wonderful drop that you put out. Much shout out to your brother. Harem, wow. same thing. Phenomenal work on that. And I'm going to just deal with Isaiah as well. Just specifically Isaiah. It says, Alas, sinning nation, a people loaded with crookedness. He talking to Yitzrael. He's not talking to Edom. He's not talking to the Amorites, the Ammonites, the uh, Persasites, wow. the uh, Hittites. He's not talking to none of the Mothers. He's talking to the Israelites. He's talking to us. He says this, a seed of evildoers, sons acting corruptly. They have forsaken Hawaii. They have provoked the set apart one of Israel. They went backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You continue in apostasy. All the head is sick and all the heart faints. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is no soundness in it. 
wounds and bruises and open sores. They have not been closed or bound up or sued with ointment. Your land is laid waste. Look at the land. Look at the land right now. We're talking GMO. We're talking about these vaccines. We're talking about chemtrails. Look at our foods. Aspartame. Mm. In our foods, high fructose corn syrup, yellow five, red 40, all this mess in our foods. We don't own no land. Look at the land. We talking where the trees? Where they at? We call the mountains today. They ain't nothing but cut down trees. The land is laid waste. Look at the water, pollution. We got fluoride in the water. All kind of minerals and things in the water that don't belong there. The minerals and stuff that belong, they've been taken out. Grass don't grow no more. You got to get sod to make your grass grow and weed and feed. What is that? Look at the land. It's laid waste. Companies just putting pollution everywhere. Look at the air that we breathe. Cancerous air. That wasn't our way when the Most High had it established before our corruption. He says, your land is laid waste. Verse 7, your cities are burned with fire. Look where our temple's at. Where's our land at? Look at it. Burnt down and built over with structures that is unbeknownst to us. Let's keep going. Strangers devour your land and your presence. We didn't have to go nowhere. We didn't have to come from no Africa. Martin Luther King let us know. Malcolm X let us know. We have originals. We don't like being called that. That's what that's what Mark, that's what our Malcolm X said. But we have original. We from here. And in our presence, the land was devoured by strangers, a nation we ain't never known. Everybody talking about Esau, Esau, Esau. But well, we knew Esau, he was our brother. This nation that has conquered us, we didn't know this tongue, we didn't know these folk. Remember, Esau was a Hebrew, he was a Hebrew Edomite. And we are Hebrew Israelite. So we would have known Esau. Mm. But this nation, these folk, foreign, don't know him. Let's keep going. Says, and it is laid waste as overthrown by strangers. And a daughter of Zion is left as a booth in the vineyard, as a hut in the garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Look at our daughters. Look what we look, look at our situation. Look at our babies. Look at our women. And although they are beautiful queens, but many of our queens don't act in the capacity of queendomship. European mindset doing things that's unbeknownst to our women. Let's keep going. Verse 9 says, Unless Hawaii hosts had left to us a small remnant, we should have become like Sodom. We would have been made like a mortal, completely destroyed. Hear the word of Hawaii, you rulers of Sidon. Give ear to the Torah of your Elohim. You people of Amora. He's calling us Sodom and Gomorrah because of our filthiness. This is how he's talking to us right now. You heard. Let's keep going. Of what use to me are your many slaughterings. So for folk that think we slaughtering the day, got to be smooth outside the scripture's mind. Because look at this here. It says, of what use to me. Are your many sort of that mean we was getting it in? He said, What use is it? declares Hawaii. I have had enough of ascending offerings of rams and the fat of fat beast. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lamb or goats. <laughs> He ain't taking no delight. Why? Because we filthy with it. Our heart's not right. 
our ways is jacked up. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courtyards? Listen to what listen to what the Most High says right here. Stop bringing futile offerings, incense. It is an abomination to me. New moons, Sabbaths, the calling of gatherers. I am unable to hear unrighteousness and assembly. Check this out. My being hates your new moons and your appointed times. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. Let's see that again. He said, my being hates your new moons and your appointed times. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. And you spread out your hands. I hide my hide from you. Though you make many prayers, I do not hear. Your hands have become filled with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourself clean. This is what he told us to do. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek right ruling. Reprove wow. the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. And plead for the widow. Mm. That's the sacrifice. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek right ruling. Reprove the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. That's the sacrifice he looking for today. He ain't looking for blood. He ain't looking for lambs, rams, goats, incense. Because we can't do it anyway. And we sure can't do it in no captivity. So Passover is beautiful. Feast of Tabernacles. Day of Atonement. Feast of trumpets. Feast of first fruits. All these feast of unleavened bread. All these are great times that we once had. Weekly Sabbaths. New moons. The gatherings called throughout the year. All these were great times. These were our so-called holidays. Our celebratory times. We slaughtered even on the Sabbath. And the high Sabbaths throughout the year. But what did he what did the most high just say? He hated all. He done with it. Tired of it. Don't want it no more. Why? Because of what he said in verses 1 to 11. We are sending nation. Crooked. Seed of evil doers and sons <coughs> acting corruptly, who have forsaken and provoked to set apart one of Yitzrayel. And until we get that together, we don't need to be worried about no sacrifice. What we need to be worried about is getting our hearts right, making us a clean heart and renew up in us a right spirit. That's what we need. Facts. <laughs> Nobody got to agree with it. That's right about the word. All facts. That's right about that Tanakh from our prophet, Yes, Yahoo, also known as Isaiah. Facts. Facts, man. We in deep water here, man. We in deep water. Surfing the wave, man. We just talking about freeing Alfred. And maybe it's too late for you, Alfred. Maybe they already got you, Alfred. Maybe they already sliced and diced you, man. Maybe your blood has already been spilled, man. On the same day as Nipsey Hussle, man. And if that ain't a sign, I don't know what it is. That the lamb is already dying. That the blood has already been spilled. Sacrifices have already been made. And the Most High detest the blood that's being spilled. When we're not there for each other. When we are slaughtering our brother with actions and words. Our sisters with words and actions. And we are not putting our power first 
we are hijacking ourselves and customs and and just uh, false beliefs with idols. Man, Ahab to Yohanan the Hebrew prince for laying it all the way down. Ahab the brother nature, man, for dropping this in the copper thread. I can't make this shit up. This shirt was already made. Free Alfred. <laughs> we just happen to name the lamb Alfred and then we find a shirt that says free Alfred with a lamb on it. Yeah. I think we're surfing the wave. I think the water's flowing in Drop Nation. And love to the Hakan Hiramar who got this. And uh, let's get this for the dismount. Psalms 50. Almighty oh, Hawa. Hawa spoke and called to the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, consummation of beauty. Hawa appeared. Our Hawa will come and not be silent. A fire will consume before him and his surroundings are excellently turbulent. He will call to the heavens above and to the earth to avenge his people. Gather my devout ones unto me, sealers of my covenant through sacrifice. Let's go. Then the heavens proclaim his righteousness for Hawa is judge. Pay heed my people and I shall speak Israel and I shall bear witness against you. Hawa, your power am I. I shall not rebuke you for your sacrifices nor for your burnt offerings my constant concern. I take not from your, nor are your burnt offerings my constant concern. Man, look at Hakan who broke this down. Your sacrifices and burnt offerings are not my constant concern. I'm not rebuking you for that. Now listen up to your charge, Israel. I shall not rebuke you for your sacrifices. That ain't the problem. You shed enough blood. I don't desire it. Nor are your burnt offerings my constant concern. I take not from your household any bull nor any pens of any goats. I don't want none of it. For mine is every beast of the forest, the cattle of a thousand mountains. I know every bird of the mountain and what creeps upon my fields is with me. Man. Wow. Before you slaughter Alfred, know that he is Hawaii. Every beast of the field, every animal, man, belongs to Hawa. And if Hawa say, I don't desire it, you don't make up your own mind and go your own way and say, let's start slaughtering Alfred. That's going to make our sin go away. That's going to purify us. That's going to guard us from the plague. Stop it, man. This is silly. And it's an abomination. The spilling of blood. It's not ordained by Hawa. Your career. I shall not rebuke you for your sacrifices, nor are your burnt offerings my constant concern. I take not from your household any bull, nor from your pens any goats. For mine is every beast of the forest, the cattle of a thousand mountains. I know every bird of the mountain and what creeps upon my fields, free Alfred, what creeps upon my fields is with me. Even were I hungry, I would not tell you, for mine is the world in its fullness. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Do I benefit when you slaughter? Offer Hawa confession. Then redeem your vows to the Most High. Most High didn't say go kill and then we cool. Go kill and then you're protected. He said redeem your vows. 
Redeem your vows. Redeem your vows, man. Redeem your oath, your covenant to put the creator first. That's your marriage. That's your bond, man. That's your heritage. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer Hawa confession. Then redeem your vows to the Most High. First, you got to, you know what I'm saying, come clean, man. You got to come clean about yourself first. You got to be clean. You got to be purified before you start slaughtering Alfred, man, because Alfred is better than you. Alfred is pure water. Are you? What sin does Alfred have that he should be slaughtered? What about yourself, man? Alfred is purified, purified, man. Alfred is free whether you slaughtered him or not, man. Alfred is free whether you slaughtered him or not. He's purified. Are you, are you pure enough to take the life of a pure animal of Hawa? Are you sure that blood ain't gonna come back on you as an abomination? You better be out of your confusion. Let's get this for the dismount. Halal Hawa. Offer Hawa confession. Then redeem your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of distress. Me. Not your idols. Me. That's rule number one. I will release you and you will honor me. So all, the, all Hawa is asking is that we call upon Hawa. And put Hawa first. That's it. Put Hawa first. Wow. Wow. Redeem your vows. Not kill Alfred. Not slaughter Alfred. Free Alfred, man. Because Alfred is free. Let's go. And upon me. Call upon me in the day of, dis in, of distress. I will release you. I will release you from what? From bondage, man. Why? And you will honor me. But to the wicked, whoever thinks they can slaughter Alfred, whoever got blood on their hands, but to the wicked. Hawa says, to what purpose do you recount my decrees and bear my covenant upon your lips? For you hate discipline. And you threw my words behind you. If you saw a thief, you agreed to be with him. And with adulterers was your lot. You dispatched your mouth for evil. And your tongue adheres to deceit. I'm a shepherd. No. Your tongue adheres to deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. Wow. You slander your mother's son. You speak against your brother, man. You slander your mother's son. Whose mother? Wisdom. Shekinah. <gasps> your breath. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your mother's sons. These have you done. And I kept silent. You thought I was like you? I will rebuke you. And lay it clearly before your eyes. Oh, you're going to see clearly, man. You're going to see clearly, man. You're going to see clearly. Because I'm going to lay it clearly before your eyes. Understand this now. You who have forgotten Hawa. Lest I tear you asunder and there be none to rescue. He who offers confession honors me. And one who orders his way. I will show him the salvation of Hawa. Order over chaos. Free Alfred. Halal Hawa.